If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Poton Store. They have the new certain shield codes already available and they have automatic email delivery for these codes. You can get them in batches of 50 codes with a slight discount or individually for 89 cents each. They also have all these other promo codes. They have um, every other set you could imagine. And if you use Tailbone code, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailbone code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to Tier Worlds 2020. Um, this is a different kind of video. I did this last time in Dallas and it ended up working out really, really nicely. I don't think I will be doing too many of these videos, but I, um, I'm so confident in my deck choice for Collinsville, just like I was for it in Dallas, where I used this very same deck, except now it's just insanely insanely better and i'm sure you'll see a couple of um spicy cards in there that weren't there in the version that me and my friend alex garcia ended up playing in dallas so the idea behind trap noir my logic and well first off i am posting this on sunday afternoon so i'm really hoping <laughs> that i am playing day two fighting my way into top eight for a fourth time in a row um, <clears throat> and it worked last time, so that's why I'm doing it this time again. So, Trevnor, my Lodic. We have Trevnor, a fantastic card with Nightwatch still in 150, and you choose two random cards from your opponent's hand, and your opponent reveals those cards and then puts them into their deck. Uh, we also have Palemon GX, where uh, we discard all of the energies from the active Pokemon, and they are knocked out at the end of their next turn. So we power up Trevnor with Milotic's Energy Grace, you knock out Milotic and then you attach three basic energies from the reserve valve to a Pokemon. And after we use Milotic to power up, we use Ace Trainer, we put our opponents onto three cards since they will have less prizes than we do. They will have five, we will have six. And that means um, after we use Ace Trainer and Nightwatch, they will have one card in hand. So between that one card in hand and their top deck, and the fact that we're going to have a Lola and Mock in play most likely, they will not be able to do too, too much. Now, in now with the new Sword and Shield rules, when we do go second, um, we don't care about going first or second in terms of like our deck is not hindered by going first because we do have four Shamans and, four, and one Detene to draw cards. But when we do go second, our plan is to use Horror House GX so that your opponent has already had one turn of no supporter and then they have a turn of no cards whatsoever which is pretty broken if you ask me um poor house gx your opponent can't play any cards from their hand during their next turn and if this pokemon has an extra psychic then they draw both players draw until they have seven cards we're not looking for the bonus effect we are simply looking to stop our opponent uh, from having a good turn so that's our strategy going second and then one of the inclusions, one of the new inclusions for the deck which helps in the consistency department is before we have four Pokemon communication, now we have the four beautiful quick bolts where I will tell you that the only games that I lost in Dallas um, for the most part, like other than my top eight match where my opponent simply top decked and I wasn't able to set up mock in one of those games which was crucial, um, but it, as long like the only games that I lost were games I dead drew, okay? And that was because I had Pokecoms in my hand and I had no other Pokemon other than my starting Pokemon. However, that will never happen again thanks to Quick Bolt because Quick Bolt discards a card and we immediately go for Shaman. So immediately the deck got so, so much better and this is much closer to the original Japanese deck where I based my list from. Um, and Quick Bolt is just absolutely fantastic. It's an insane card. We have four Quick Bolts and four Ultra Bolts, so we have so many ways to just keep drawing cards, keep finding resources, and get to the combo of my Lodic Trevnor plus Ace Trainer. Now, another new inclusion into the deck 
is Rescue Stretcher. We do discard a bunch of cards, especially now with a Quick Wolf, we discard with Ultra Wolf, we discard with um, the Dene, and having Rescue Stretcher in the deck does mean that we have now more versatility and more options to discard from our hand rather than before. We needed to keep the Milotics alive in our hand, we needed to keep the Alolan Mock in our hand because once it hit the discard, it was there forever. But now with Rescue Stretcher, we can actually make cool plays where we discard a Pokemon purposely with Pile Compressor and we immediately get it back to continue going, or we use it in the late game to stop deck out, or we use it in the late game to recycle, or we use it to recover the Alolan Mock, or for anything, it's such a versatile card, it's such a good, good card. Another new inclusion into the deck is the Gladian. Sometimes prizing the mock really sucked. Now we have access to prizes. Um, prizing your last VS Seeker could sometimes be game winning or game losing. Um, prizing an energy, prizing a shaman, prizing a trevnor, prizing a weakness policy. Now, not only do you have access to your Discord Public Stretcher, now we have access to our prizes through Gladian, which is really, really nice. And then the two new spicy cards that we, before we had a counter catcher and a Malolana. Both of the cards were really, really good, but the new rules, the new meta, the new possible decks, viable decks, definitely force adaptations and new strategies. And so, the new rules, first off, are um, allowing me to play this Wolfet. This Wolfet means when we go first, and especially for the mirror matches, is particularly strong. When we go first, if your opponent wins the flip and they choose to go second, if we go first, we do our thing and we retreat into the Wolfet, then they will not be able, even though they will be able to play a supporter, they will not have ability. So they will not be able to have explosive turns no matter what deck they are. With Shamans, with the Dene's, um, they can Lele, but that's it, right? Because Lele is a Psychic Pokemon and Bike Barricade does not stop Psychic Pokemon's attacks. But um, overall, this is a very specific tech for the mirror match. I know the deck. Trevnor has caught on, I know people are considering, so this is why I am um, I am putting this into a deck so I have an advantage over the mirror matches where if they choose, it's a lose-lose for them. If they choose to go first to avoid the Wolfet, then I get the Horror House. And so they do their thing, I Horror House, and then I get the Milotic plus um, get them down to one card first, and that puts you at a very big advantage. And if they choose to go second, then I have the wolf, right? So it's a lose-lose whether they choose uh, first or second. And it's fantastic that no matter whether you go first or second, you are able to disrupt your opponent before they even started playing the game. And then this beautiful Pokemon. This is something that I came up with um, a couple of weeks ago. I was playing against Snorlax VMAX with Sinchino. I was losing to Snorlax VMAX with Sinchino. Like, they were getting turn, explosive turn ones with Shamans and the Tenes, um, even without a supporter. When they played a supporter, it was even worse because they got too thin a lot more. And then overall, um, if they set up once in Chino, it was really hard, right? I wasn't like outright losing all the games, but I was having a losing record against the deck. However, if instead of setting up the Mock, you set up Garbodor, you're actually stopping Sinchino and you're stopping Zorg and you're now also stopping the uh, item lock Vileplume and the ability Vileplume that stops basic Pokemon from attacking so it improves the Zorg matchup it improves the um, the Sinchino matchups the future Sinchino matchups and most importantly of all it turns aggro from an auto loss to Possibly an auto win, not necessarily an auto win. If they end up top decking Fab at some point, then that could be a problem. But we do have Wolfet to turn off the item lock and reattach a tool to Garbodor, and therefore um, we are able to um, we are able to get the lock going. So yeah, I think Garbodor is a great inclusion. It's going to be very surprising for our opponents. It's, it's really nice that we now have a 2 to line of ability denial. We have one Theta, one Grimer, one Mock, and one Garbodor. Other than those specific matchups, Mock is going to be much better to set up um, against everything else because Garbodor does stop Milotic. So if at some point the Milotic gets, um, our, tre our one Trevnar gets knocked out, we would need to field lower our own tool so that we could use our own Milotic to establish another Trevnar. So, that's obviously not ideal, um, but it can happen, right? So the 61st card for this deck would definitely be a second field lower for those situations. 
But I think that having both options is really, really ideal and really, really powerful. Yeah, I do think it is very, very good and very powerful. So yeah, this is the deck. Um, Garb, Wob, the four quick bolts, the stretcher, and the Gladian are the um, eight new cards in the deck, the eight new sword and shield cards in the deck. Four Pokecoms are gone, Malolana is gone, Sycamore is gone, Countercatcher is gone, and something else is gone that I can't really tell right now. Um, but yeah, this is the deck that I'm using. Hopefully right now as you're watching this in day two of Collinsville Regionals. Um, I don't know, I, this is Pablo from the past speaking to you in the future. Um, so yeah, hopefully we get to showcase this deck in the top eight of Collinsville Regionals. I'm very confident in it. I'm fairly sure it's one of the best decks, if not the best deck for the events and in Expanded right now. Um, I might even say Pokemon will consider some bans if this deck ends up dominating in Collinsville <coughs> because it is another deck that does not allow your opponent to play. But I actually do enjoy this one because you get to finish the games in three or four turns after you start attacking. Whereas mill decks and style decks, um, they just you sit there for 40 minutes doing the same thing over and over and trying to to stop your opponent from doing stuff, right? So I like this style a little more. I already had success with it. Um, I'm very confident in it for this event and hopefully things went well, you know? Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to leave a like and I will see you in the next video, bye bye!